Hey, Carlo, how are you doing? Um, I'm okay, thanks. I'm how okay. is there right. in Italy? Uh, everything, everything is fine. I mean, the the weather is dull, and uh, but we are, we are coming, we are coming from the from the Christmas holidays, and uh, you know, in Italy, it's very, it's very uh, beautiful season when uh, when you have the Christmas holidays. So at least I've been able to rest a little bit during the holidays. Yeah. So it's. Uh, it's uh it's very cool that uh i'm coming from the holidays yeah yeah so a bit of a relax before the hard work exactly exactly yeah yeah i was i was supposed to do so many things during those uh, few uh, free days that i had during the, the the christmas time but then i was unable to do everything i want so i i don't know what but sometimes it's just good to relax, stay on the sofa and watch a movie, for example. You don't have all the time to do things. <laughs> so something that just uh, will be done later <laughs> at some point. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. here the temperature is a bit uh, coldish. Today is uh, minus 25. Jesus so... Christ. Where are you located? Finland. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> but the next the week cold. is going to be warmer. It's going to be around zero. <laughs> so it's, but it's nice because it's this crispy cold. So it, there is mm. no humidity. The humidity is the one that kills you. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I agree. Italian yeah. uh, cold, it's very wet, it's very, mm. yeah, it's, it's very, as you said, very humid. Yeah. There, the north, the cold, it's dry, so you can bear it much better, you know? Yeah, it's true, it's true. But let's go and talk about uh, what you do, because uh, Carlo Bellotti Publishing, uh, you are doing a lot of things. You have two... Um, uh, record label, wormhole death, and then uh, epictronic. Uh, would you would you mind to tell more about your uh, record label? Yes, uh, uh, of course. Um, so those are two different labels because uh, we work uh, obviously uh, with different music genres. Uh, the fir the first one was the was wormhole death, which was which is the metal and hard rock label uh, because when I started the publishing company under Ward Warner Chapel, they, they told me that uh, it was much better if I was focusing on metal and hard rock because uh, the, all the other genres uh, were something that uh, they were really not interested in because uh, they already had everything like pop, uh, RMB, etc. So they, the guy that uh, started my company with my lawyer, uh, from from Warner, was uh, much more interested in metal and hard rock because uh, Warner was uh, quite interested. Uh, I mean, at least uh, this uh, division of Warner in the Benelux was very interested in, in in working with metal and and hard rock. So. Uh, I started, uh, and also because I was coming from that genre, because I was producing hard rock and metal uh, myself uh, as a studio producer and as a musician. So they they told me that uh, it was much better if I was working with that music genre. And so I, I went to, I asked uh, Emiliano Lanzoni from our music group uh, a meeting for a meeting on the Appennino Tosco Emiliano, he's from uh, Imola. I am from Florence, so we decided to meet on the mountains uh, half, uh, halfway. And uh, I asked him if he was interested in, in supporting my label under his uh, label group, because our music group is a, is a label group uh, that is giving the label support, like distribution, marketing, uh, and everything that the labels need to exist and to give the artists a service. 
And uh, Emiliano said yes, because he was already a fan of my music when I was a musician. And, uh, and so I started Wormhole Data, which was uh, initially meant to be called the uh, Ringworm Records, but uh, he didn't like it because there is a band in, in America called Ringworm. And then it was uh, changed into that through the Wormhole, but it was too long and too difficult, so we said Wormhole Data. And, uh, and so we started this uh, metal label and uh, we started working with, uh, with a few very, very cool band, uh, Mechanical God Creation from Como Milano and uh, The Way of Purity, which is still with us. And, uh, and from, that, from that moment, uh, we, we have been growing and growing and growing. And uh, so the metal label is nowadays, I uh, think, uh, quite uh, important in, in the country, in Italy, and uh, probably in Europe as well. And uh, yeah, we, we, we started our office uh, in Japan, uh, and then in, in America, and uh, we have now 560 releases, which is quite, uh, quite a lot. And uh, distribution worldwide, uh, 10,000 metal media, which we work with, uh, and so on. Then uh, in 2014, uh, I received a message from uh, uh, the guys from Warner that told me that uh, we could start with a new with a new project, which was not uh, necessarily uh, segregated into metal. Uh, so I could start working also with genres that I like to say I am an indie rock uh, freak, for instance, but I also love uh, new wave. Uh, dark wave uh, and all these kind of things. So that was the perfect uh, chance for me to start a, an indie rock, uh, dark wave, uh, but also down tempo, experimental label. And so, yeah, on the 4th of December, 2014, uh, Warner announced the, the beginning of Epictronic. And so from that moment, we started working with different bands as well, which, which I love. And uh, we released, uh, for instance, uh, Shadow Dream, which is an ambient jazz band, which has reached uh, 29 million streams. Then we have uh, released uh, some bands uh, that have reached the charts in America, the rock charts in America, that we have released uh, some bands that have uh, reached uh, gold, uh, gold album, uh, platinum, and so on. And so uh, that was amazing for us because uh, uh, enlarging the spectrum of uh, music genres has given us the, the possibility to reach larger audience and so yeah. reach bigger numbers and reach uh, charts uh, and bigger numbers also. So we have the possibility to work uh, with metal and hard rock, which is the music genres that we love, but also to work in the mainstream and also mainstream, but still very experimental uh, music genres that uh, can give us uh, chances to even make more money. Why not? Why not to yeah. say that? Because it's it's really important to, to to make a profit, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Left of left of the slash uh, reached uh, uh, reached uh, the thirteen position in the rock chart in America. Nice. It was it was wow. even before Slipknot. They they were before Slipknot. Well, it's an album that is produced by the producer of Guns N' Roses. But uh, uh, I mean, if I didn't have this label, I couldn't. Do it because Wormal that uh, they would not they would have never signed to Wormal that for instance because they would they would have seen all the metal bands and 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 uh, left of the slash would never signed with Wormal that because it's a metal label you know yeah uh, the Levan Gog have reached the forty six position in the rock chart it's a Canadian band so I mean and I also have a uh, done some, some rap stuff that has gone 
big and uh, Shadow Dream, as I told you, 29 million streams and so on. So it, it's amazing. It's amazing to have this yeah. opportunity now. Yeah, it's good because uh, if you do just uh, one genre, then uh, the opportunity are lower. But when you open to something else, uh, then you get to experiment and uh, get new experiences. Because I think that it's all about experiences also. So that's that's something uh, yeah, yeah. really important. Lot. I've learned a lot working with different uh, with different bands. Uh, I have learned a lot, and especially with the new bands we are signing now. Uh, I have learned. In I am learning so I am learning so much from the artists because those guys are are producers, those guys are managers, those guys are A and R in other labels. So I mean, I, I constantly learn from uh, from from the bands, from the artists. I mean, two two guys uh, from Warm All Dead bands. Uh, Work at night and work at Napalm Records, for instance, <laughs> and I learn oh. from them. I, I we swap, uh, uh, we swap uh, tips, uh, suggestions. Yeah. You know? So, in the end, uh, in the end, it's so beautiful to have the chance to to work with such amazing people. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have uh, the opportunity to get to know new people uh, and the work with them. It's it it makes everything yeah. better. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. how many Absolutely. band uh, do you have actually nowadays in the roster, more or less? No, we we don't have a roster because okay. we don't we are not a we are not a um, artist uh, artist. Uh, development or artist uh, agreement uh, we don't do artist agreements okay. we only do licensing of albums so yeah. we we license an album from a band and we only work on the album then uh, if the album uh, goes well we sign for another album so we go album after album so okay. we don't do long term planning with the bands unless uh, there is a contract uh, with uh, Carlo Bellotti Publishing, which is uh, the publishing division, then uh, that's a different situation. Because, uh, for instance, uh, we sign up, we sign a publishing deal, and then there is a planning, a long-term career. But those are completely different uh, uh, dynamics because okay. uh, it's very difficult that we do it uh, through to the labels. We don't do it to the labels. Those are more like bank operations because. Uh, there are bigger budgets. Uh, uh, for instance, we are doing it with an Australian artist called uh, Jeremy Ariaris, and uh, he's, he's, in, he's in the artist roster, but that's a big budget operation. Yeah. Because he's a, he's a, he has a multi-album deal. When we work with the labels, uh, we start uh, slowly with just one first album, so licensing deal, and then we see how it goes. If the band is doing well, if the band is hard working, but also if the band is happy with us, then we do another album. So it goes on licensing of records and okay. not uh, on uh, contracts on the band uh, or on the artist. Okay, this so, is interesting because, you know, I didn't know how it works. I I have never been uh, doing uh, an album. <laughs> so... I have no idea what's going but, on. So it's really interesting to get to know how it works. And uh, yeah. when about you see, this... when you see roster, when you see roster, it's because the label is developing the band, it's developing the band, and is doing probably a multi-album deal with the band, and is doing one, two, three, four, five, six, I don't know how many albums with the band, and so they have a career planning with the band. So the band belong to the label roster. We have a different approach. We only license albums. So the we have a catalog, but we don't have a band roster because we only work with the albums. Okay. Because, and... uh, because uh, well, then 
and a, a band can stay with us for three, four albums, and it, somehow they belong to the roster because, uh, uh, for instance, uh, the Way of Purity have done five albums with us. Mechanical Girl Creation have done two albums with us. Then they have changed the label, and probably they will get back with us with the with the with the, with the fourth album. So those bands somehow belong to the roster, but uh, uh, there is no official uh, contract that yeah. says that they have a career planning with us because we don't work with, the, with long-term contracts career because uh, we want to, to, to let the bands free. There is a yeah. band uh, that... Uh, uh, is, is now signing to Sony Music. I can't say the name now because it's still uh, it's still uh, confidential. But this band has done um, has done three singles with us, and they have gone big with the singles. And then they have a they they had an offer we they got an offer with Sony Music, and with the contract that we have, they are free to go for the album with Sony Music. Because with the three singles, they have already achieved a big status that have given them the possibility to get the interest of a major label. And as long as we don't have a career planning with a band, the singles, album, second album, third album, after the third singles, we have let, we have let them go to Sony Music because... Uh, with the third singles, we have already done our job and they can go to Sony Music now. Yeah. Obviously, we were we were letting them go to Sony Music anyway, even if we had a career planning. But uh, one of the reasons why the bands are happy with this kind of contract is because whenever they have a bigger opportunity, they are immediately free to go. But also because we don't want to keep any band that is not happy with us stuck in a contract. So if you are not happy to go after the first album, you must be free to go. Yeah. So we don't do multi-album deals for this reason. Because uh, if you are not happy to go, you must be free to go. Yeah, yeah. Instead, there are labels that, uh, I mean, most of the labels, especially the big ones, that uh, sign the bands for minimum, three album, minimum. Because they they invest a lot of money on the bands and they want to recoup the money, but we do co investment co investment with the band. We invest together, so yeah. it's it's totally it's totally right and correct that the band is free to go whenever they want to go because we have invested together. Yeah. So um, it's totally balanced as a yeah. deal, and yeah. it's totally fair. It's a, it's a collaboration. Between yes, it's, it's, it's not like the, uh, the boss and uh, then the worker. It's a it's that a co-working. Exactly, it's a business to business uh, relation relationship. Perfect. You have co you have uh, completely understood the 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 logic behind uh, the deals that we do. We empower the band to act as a company and uh, to join forces with us. They put the music and they put the, their, their own resources, which are mainly the, the possibility to play live, the possibility to promote the music live. And we put our own resources, which are uh, the, the structure, the contacts, the marketing network, the knowledge, the distribution. We join forces together. We both put, uh, a little bit of money, which are just a little bit because we mainly rely on the power of the collaboration. So we don't rely on the money, but we rely more on the power of the collaboration. So the, the little money that we put are just there to pay the just basic things, like print a small run of CDs, pay the mechanicals, uh, and, and just a few things more. And then uh, we try to exploit this uh, music, this album, through the power that we 
create together with a small amount of money and with the resources that we put together. Yeah, yeah. Because there are no big budgets anymore. So that's the only way that we can work in a successful way. Yeah. And how do you choose uh, if uh, you are going to work with a band? Is the band sending uh, the music to you, the album, and then you decide if it's going to be published outside? How does it work? Well, we receive so many submissions every day. So, I mean, we have a big choice. And also now I don't choose it anymore personally because uh, now I have uh, the a &R people who choose for me. But uh, the, the policy is that the band has to be, has to be, obviously, we start from the music, which has to be great, uh, original, unique, as much as we can, uh, but not too unique to be impossible to market it, obviously, uh, too difficult to market. Uh, the image of the band for us is really, really important see how the band is presenting themselves because we don't like the band with a very poor image uh, and then we try to get to know the people we do skype calls skype meetings uh, sometimes even meeting in person in person and we try to understand which kind of people they are if they are um, humble people if they want to collaborate with us because they really like the way we work they really like our approach or they say, yes, 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 we like it just because they want to sign to a label. And uh, it, it, at the end of the day, they don't give a crap about our own, actually, logic and policy of everything. We want to have, uh, we want to work with people which are really humble and which, are, which understand that this is not uh, a service, but this is actually a collaboration. So I don't work for yeah. you, but I work with you. And you don't work for me, but it works with me. So as you said perfectly, correctly, there is no boss and there is no slave, but it's actually a collaboration where we are really business to business. And that's really, really important that the people understand it because some artists still think that the label should be providing for everything, including advances, including this, including that. But this doesn't work like that any longer because unfortunately there are no budgets any longer to do this. If we were in the 80s, I was, I was even going to pay you a new car, no problem, you know? But the fact that uh, nowadays uh, we really have to struggle to recoup the money that we invest on an album makes uh, the selection really, really, really hard because we only sign the people that really want to make it. Yeah. So choosing a band is a combination of, of many parameters. And uh, it's not only the music, it's not only the image, it's not only the conviction and the approach, the humble approach, the nice people, the polite people. For, for us, it's really important that the people are really polite because, for instance, we can talk about everything. You can tell me everything, like uh, even that you are not happy etc etc if you are polite we can discuss about really everything but if you are rude then it doesn't work with me because i don't like rude approach so whenever we understand that these people are really like this like we want then uh, we offer them a deal we offer them a deal and usually they like it because uh, this kind of intelligent people, this kind of how, humble people, but also the people that have a big love for their own music, for their own image, etc., understand perfectly what we are offering. You know, usually the people that don't understand what we are offering is the people that have a completely different mindset. Yeah, that uh, we have very distant from us, and so it's better if we go different ways the ways yeah yeah and uh, you mentioned before that uh, you were a musician uh what yeah, instrument yeah. Uh, what instrument uh, do you or did you play 
I hope you still play. <laughs> well, uh, I have been studying bass since I was a since I was a kid. I was studying bass uh, with uh, private teachers and so on. But in my first band, which was a black metal band, it was called Necromas. I was a singer. I was singing. It was uh, okay. now this band still exists, but uh, it is completely a different thing, you know, because uh, with the two al with the first two albums we we went quite big, but now it's it's just something I don't know what it is. They still exist. No original member in the band, so both. But, uh, and then I had uh, another few alternative, uh, alternative metal rock bands. Uh, no, I mean, I, I play now in an in a indie rock project, but uh, it's just for fun. Just yeah, for fun. yeah, yeah. But it's important that you still play because uh, otherwise yeah, it's a pity. But yeah, but I have no time. So, yeah, I know, I know, I can relate. Uh, yesterday, at science, uh, one of the last interviews before the end of the year, I promised uh, to take the bus and start to play again because it's been a while that I haven't been playing. So yesterday evening, then I was like, I feel like I want to, so I played two hours, and I was quite rusty. <laughs> I must say that uh, it was like, uh, yeah, the sound is not coming. Uh, why, why my hand is not going like I want, fast as I want. But yeah, from here, so you... I try to at least once per week play. I so try, you play bass? I, I, yeah, the bass. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. I, I, I have always been uh, Warwick and Dorser. Okay. I actually yeah. here I have just uh, uh, an acoustic bass, so the oh, cool. in Italy I I still have my two basses. I have the Fender Jets and then uh, Jim Reed five string active pickups, but they are there. They have been there uh, ten years now, and uh, I was supposed to get them last summer. But then I had some payments to do, and I was okay. Neither this time, but maybe this year. This year they are going to come with me <laughs> because it's a pity they are there, which, and which I would. Yeah. 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 Which, yeah. which city are you from in Italy? Trieste. 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 Yes, Friuli, Venezia, right. Giulia. Yeah, well, right. Yeah. Oh, so well. that's that's uh something that I want to do this year, take my basses from there to here so then I can play because the acu acoustic bass, yeah, it's it's nice, but it's not the same. And also the, the other two bass that I have, they are different, the different sounds, uh, the different way of of feel uh, the strings uh, under your your fingers and so on. So but do you want to join a band? Maybe one day, I don't know. I have my uh, one of my uh, workmates, he's a guitar player and sometimes he sings. And he was like, yeah, because I'm starting a new band, think about to be our best, best player. And then I was, I'm quite rusty because I haven't been playing for a long time. And he was, it's fine, it's fine. But le let's see, everything can happen. <laughs> uh, <cool>. I don't know. <laughs> Here we have a question for you left on Facebook um, and it uh, Stratuts that ask how do you see the metal music genres in the next six years? Well, mm, the, metal, the metal music genres in the si next six years? Yeah. Uh, well, I see it as a melting pot because the, the the metal the metal music is uh, is just constantly getting influenced by other music genres so the way i see it is that they uh, get uh, uh, 
melted into other genres, you know, bands uh, who play metal with uh, doom, with uh, jazz, with, uh, uh, I don't know, funky, and uh, other bands who play black metal with uh, indie rock and uh, showgaze and so on. So all I can say about the way I see metal during the next six years, but that could be even the, next, the coming 10 years, is that uh, I see the bands uh, reinventing new sounds, new genres, because uh, that's the only way to make it work, because everything has been said already. So the only way that you can uh, invent new sounds is to mix, to create new mishmash of sounds uh, using other genres, you know? That, that's what I that's what I said on uh, Dietro Le Quinte at Rock Hard interview, and they made a huge title about this because uh, that, that's that's true. There is nothing you can invent, but there is still the possibility to create quality music by mixing the genres and creating something fresh, you know, which is not new, but it's fresh because. Uh, if you get a band uh, which mixes, uh, I don't know, metal with mazurka, at the beginning will, st will sound strange, but then with the time, you may like it. Yeah. It's, it's, when, it's when like we invented opera core with Chrysalis, you know? The people were like, what the fuck is this? What is opera core? What is opera core? And then it went huge, went so big that Chiara uh, was was called by by was called by Tarion to sing with Tarion, you know. Yeah. But uh, everything started with Chrysalis, uh, and everything started because we invented opera core, and opera core was just a, a production concept. Instead of making the new symphonic metal the nuclear blast sound alike record with the uh, the normal drums, uh, the forty, the four hundred and forty uh, tuning guitars, etc., etc. Standard the tuning. Sorry, we have put the low tuning on guitars. We have made these very plastic uh, death core drums uh, triggering. We have made these uh, apocalyptic uh, uh, keyboards that were dropping this uh, apocalyptic atmosphere on top, uh, and then Chiara making this uh, extreme opera singing on top of this uh, deathcore sounding music. And now if you go into the metal genres, there is opera core as a music genre. And yeah. we invented it. So in the end, uh, uh, and there are other bands who play opera core now because uh, uh, I get submissions from bands who say, we play opera core, we would like to sign for your label and be released by the opera core division because we have a small division called opera core and uh, we release uh, some albums with them. But th that is very strict because the singer must have a degree in opera singing. The production has to be in some way, etc., etc. So for now, there are only three albums that have met the the specifications. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, in the end, uh, we, we have invented a genre. So everybody could do this by mixing two genres, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's core and opera music, for instance. Yeah. And I That's think I now nowadays it's really uh, difficult to uh, put a band sometimes not all the bands but there are certain bands that is uh, pretty much impossible to uh, categorize because they love to experiment and uh, in a album every song can have different influences and it's uh, i think it's a really interesting uh, so it's also giving a you know a tag putting a tag on the band it's it's impossible and I, I don't know if it's something right to do nowadays. I know that uh, uh, people that uh, uh, are uh, attached to the older metal scene, they just see the metal in a certain way and then they don't like 
when a band experiment, but I think that it's right that a band experiment because they can grow up, they can find their sound. And as people, we grow old and we change. And so the music should be. So I that's, totally agree. that's something. I totally agree. We have uh, recently we have recently done uh, the label event at the tattoo convention uh, in Florence, and uh, a lot of journalists were there. But I was talking with the uh, with the girls from uh, RockNation.it, which is a which is a magazine from Florence, and they and they and we were talking about this exactly this, the fact that uh, we cannot give the bands a tag any longer. We can give the bands the macro tag, like, I don't know, doom metal, black metal, but then the micro tags can't be given any longer because they have so many different influences. Specifically, if you look in every song, then there are so many different, which is impossible. And you said it correctly. In my opinion, I mean, my opinion, I totally agree with you. It's impossible to give the micro tags any longer. You can only give the the, the macro tags. Macro tags, uh, yes, but micro tags is impossible. Yeah, yeah, true. But let's get to talk again about metal, but this time I'll, I want to know, how did you get into metal music? <laughs> it's very simple. I was at school. I was at school. I was uh, at the uh, um, Salesiani priest yeah. school, Christian school, and there were a couple of guys, especially one with uh, the leather jacket with uh, the patches, uh, Overkill, Metallica, Slayer, Pantera, and so on. It was his name was Luca. And so I asked him, what is this? And he said, uh, this is metal. This is metal music. And I was, uh, what the fuck is this? And he said, uh, okay, c come with me today to the, to the record shop. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you what it is. So after the school, he took me to the, to the, to the metal, to, to, sorry, to the, to the record shop, to the record store. And he put me uh, what's the name of the Raining Blood from Slayer in the headphones. I was completely fucking blown away. And I was like, this is the metal music. So I told the man, give me give me this cassette. It was a tape. Give me this tape. And then I was like, uh, look, I give me another tape. I can buy two today. And so he gave me um, Testament, the legacy. And so I bought uh, Raining Blood from Slayer and Testament, the legacy. And that was the end of everything because I started listening to metal. The third album was They Side, uh, They Side. And uh, from that moment was the end of everything. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favorite band? Or a band that you feel is uh, the, the one that you always uh, find, uh, you know, uh, more uh, a comfortable band, let's say, the one that you always get back to listen. Uh, but it's not a metal band, though. You, or you but want it, to know. It doesn't matter. A metal band? Well, my favorite band of all time is Christian Death, with okay. uh, only, only with Rose Williams. With the with the first singer, so we are talking about the first three records. With the uh, Alan Painter, the singer who committed suicide. Yeah, yeah. So Christian Death, uh, Death We Wish, uh, Only Theaters of Pain, uh, and a couple of album, uh, and a couple couple of subsequent albums. Then uh, after them, immediately come the Pixies. Pixies. Yeah. Then afterwards, Sonic Youth. Uh, and then uh, hardcore bands, Neurosis, Converge. Yeah. My favorite bands are not metal bands, even if uh, I still love Slayer so much. 
Yeah. 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 Like a boot slayer at the fifth position. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what was the first metal or rock concert that uh, you have been that you have seen? Uh, Clash of the Titans. Clash of the Titans, Slayer, Megadeth, Testament, Suicidal Tendencies. Yeah, so you start with massive. a big one. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was uh, massive in Firenze. Uh, I don't remember, not even the year, maybe 1992, something like that. Yeah. I'm old, uh, I'm very old, so. You are not old. And remember, oh. age is just a number. If you feel young, you are young. <laughs> That's all. That that means I'm, I'm old. Well, the the hair are still black, but look at this. Ah, but it uh, it makes just more fashion. fashion <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You are really really nice. You are really really nice. <laughs> I mean. Uh... <laughs> You don't look old, so you are not old, in my opinion. <laughs> but you, you have really, experience. Really that's, that's yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's true. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. You're a really nice girl, yeah. for real. <laughs> but uh, now let's go to the random topics uh, and let's see today what we are going to get uh, and what we are going to talk about. It can okay. be anything. And we got the dreams. Uh, so, what was your dream when you were young? What you were dreaming to become? Uh, what I am today. Because uh, when I was young, uh, I was uh, abandoned on on a street, on the street. I was uh, okay. like a stray, like a stray dog, like a stray kid. So. I was always uh, dreaming to become uh, somebody that could uh, provide for himself without uh, without having to ask anything to anybody and uh, do what I love to do what I like to do what I love as a job and to to also help others to achieve what I wanted to achieve and to help uh, the other strays which are obviously the dogs and the uh, and the kids uh, like me so in the end uh, that's what i do so yeah. that's what i that's what i wanted to be that's that's because, amazing uh, that you achieve your dreams and you did everything you 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 have done so far yeah that that was a, that was a very tough battle because uh, i was in a very uh let's say criminal area i was grown up in a criminal area left uh, alone the whole day uh, in the streets because my parents were not uh, around so i had to fight uh, not to become like my friends because they were all uh, selling drugs uh, and uh, making the easy money but i knew that the easy money are not for long so and I also had to give an example to my brother, which was younger than me, was my little brother. So that was the first battle, not to become like them and to make, make them understand that we were not willing to become like them because they don't like when you say no. No. And so I had to give uh, a lot of uh, punches in the face quite a lot of people. And then uh, to become what I wanted to be. So to work in the music, to produce a lot of bands, to work uh, in the music industry. Uh, first as a producer in studio for my music. And then uh, when my music was su successful, because with the first two albums from Necromas, we went quite big. So the people started asking me to, to produce the music. But the budget for the first album was taken from... Uh, the machines and the telephones open with a fucking crowbar and all the coins take it to the studio to pay the studio just to let you know how the situation was and then uh, and then uh, the, the 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 other battle was to try to to change the situation i was in you know and i and i made it i made it yeah. because uh will is power Whenever you want something, 
uh, you, you got it. You yeah, so, yeah. And now, now I have the possibility to help the others, which are in my situation, especially the dogs, because the, my life it's all about dogs. Yeah. Stray dogs. But also, I also help kids as well, but mostly dogs. Yeah, yeah. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to do. Important. Yeah. 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 But it's uh, it's really beautiful that uh, you you fought for your dream and uh, you you were able to get out from uh, what was your situation and to yeah. to grow as the man you are. So, yeah, yeah. I just Congratulations for that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It was tough but uh, I th- I think I was uh, I think I was born off, so I was lucky for that. Yeah, I wasn't. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't born as as a snowflake, so I'm quite happy. I'm quite lucky in that in that yeah. thing. Also, I I had no other choice. Yeah, I didn't have any other choice. Yeah, but it's always when something is, uh, you know, um, the people that uh, make something in their life, and that they work hard, uh, you know behind the hard behind the the success there is always a lot of hard work and you see when a person is working hard uh, understand a lot of things uh, that people that maybe they have the, ma- the money from the parents and so on, they don't get then they don't get certain things uh, and how how you should act and how you could help other people and uh, it's it's an it's a different way of thinking and living so yeah i yeah i totally i, I totally agree there is no the needs there is no success coming from a comfort from a place of comfort yeah the success is always coming out of the uh, out of the uh, trouble that that's, yeah. that's how i see it yeah and uh, it can be really painful to get where you want to get but it's a journey and uh, you have just to to believe in the process yeah at some point at some point everything get where you want but there is a lot a lot before before reaching that that point so yeah and also during the pro- during the process is tough because a lot of people try to stop you a lot of people try to put you down a lot of people are envious and so on so it's not easy also when you when you try to do something but when you see this it means that you are going the right way yeah when you see that the people try to put you down when you see that the people are envious when you see that the people talk shit about you etc that means that you are going the right way and that, yeah. that, that's the moment you have to continue because True. who hates you their dream is to stop you then yeah. what you have to do is to continue that's it yeah that's true that's true but let's get another another topic let's see what we get i like that uh, i like that jar it's, it's really yeah it's really it's cool. a fun one <laughs> something different <laughs> Okay, best moments. So if you think about your life and you say ta- take you take one moment that you consider the best, the one that that still when you think about it get emotional. There, I- there is one, I think there are many, but if you pick one, which one will be? It's very it's very abstract moment it's not a moment that you can uh, define in one second or in one instant but it's the moment where i understood that uh, everybody you lose like uh, it could be for instance uh, a friend or it could be your dad or it could be your dog especially your your animals because uh, I have myself a lot of dogs now I have five but I always have a lot of dogs and 
I always take very unlucky dogs, old dogs that nobody wants, sick dogs. So they die. They die on me all the time. The, the best moment in my life has been the day that I understood that those souls do not leave you. They actually go in a place of protection. They go in a place uh, where they can protect you and they can give you more power and they can give you more strength and they give can give you more success. They can give you more money. They can give you more everything. When I understood this and uh, I have uh, put this uh, in the same moment that I understood that uh, I believe in God, because for me, God is Mother Nature, yeah. the, the 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 nature that has created me and that has created the my my brothers and the the, the animals, the dogs, has created this the possibility to stay together, basically forever. Yeah, and that uh, together, the moment that I understood that God exists and uh, is uh, constantly protected me and has given me the chance to stay with those souls forever. Because when they die, they don't leave me, they don't disappear, but they actually go in a place beside me or over me or basically around me of protection. Those two things together have made really, has changed my life. Completely. Yeah, yeah. and I'm, I'm really feel safe like uh, yeah totally completely safe which uh, I have never felt before yeah yeah so there is protection around you yeah it's an abstract concept or, or a lot of people may say well I don't know you think that your animals would I protect you or you believe in God and blah 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 yes that's what I think yeah yeah, yeah. And that's what is constantly making me stronger and stronger, even if uh, I have so much suffering inside me, you know? But uh, this is what makes me survive. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Yeah. yeah, that's good. But now let's go to an argument that is uh, the most important of this interview. It's pizza. Do you okay. like pizza? Yeah. Yes, I like pizza, but I like only a couple of uh, versions. Okay, so what's your favorite pizza? Allora, my favorite pizza is uh, my own copyright pizza. Okay. Okay. Can, can I tell you which one is it? Of course. <laughs> uh, okay. It's uh, white with no tomato, no mozzarella, nothing. Just uh, a bed of gorgonzola bed of gorgonzola with two eggs on a side and uh, one burrata on the other side that's okay. my interesting pizza. yeah it's super amazing because uh, when the eggs the eggs are obviously not uh, boiled fried so when the eggs open and all the and all the red goes on the pizza together with the burrata opens on the other side every slice uh, Every piece you eat, you have a, a little bit of egg and gorgonzola or a little bit of burrata and gorgonzola. It's simply fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's my pizza. Otherwise, otherwise, if there is no possibility to have this, quattro formaggi. But no tomato, please. No tomato, okay. just okay. white. And, and what about you? Oh, my favorite pizza is uh, margarita plus uh, olives and stracchino cheese. That's that's the one. I like strong taste. I don't like gorgonzola. I'm one of those weird no. people. No, but I like <laughs> olives. I could eat olives all, all the day. So, yeah, olive is uh, a must. But they have to be those uh, um, black, uh, tasty, juicy olives. Um, no green okay. olives or those uh, oh. small, dry, black. They, they don't work. They are... They are not something that I appreciate on the on the pizza, okay. but yeah. 
<laughs> and do, do, uh, you, do you find those olives in Finland? Um, no, no. The strachino is impossible to find here. Uh, mm -hmm. but sometimes I I may ask ricotta to have on the pizza, so it give there is a good contrast to be between uh, the black olives and the ricotta. But yeah, in Finland, it's not that easy to find good pizzas. Uh, but there are places that that are they are improving day by day. <laughs> so that's are that's you, a good are you thing. in Helsinki? I'm in Pori, or actually I'm in Ulvila, that is eight kilometers from Pori, and Pori is about I don't know how many kilometers from Helsinki. Uh, it's, uh, I'm thinking, because uh, last time I went to Helsinki, I took uh, before the train to Tampere, and it was... Uh, ah, so you're hours. nearer to Tampere. Yeah, more close, uh, the mo most close is Tampere, yeah. Tampere, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but yeah, uh, and what do you think? There is there is this uh, um, argument that divide people in two. Um, what do you think about uh, pineapple on pizza? Is a yes or is a no? Uh, it's crap. <laughs> Absolute bullshit. Did you, did you watch the video? I I put a video with all the, the answer from 2023 that I got from the 24 uh, guests that I had. And uh, there is this <laughs> collection of answer. And it was fun because there were people just... Uh, thinking about why it doesn't work or why I don't like. <laughs> so it was interesting no. to see the, the thinking that some, <laughs> no. some were putting. No, I haven't seen it, but please send, me the, please send me the link because I want to watch it. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so curious. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> fun. Uh, it, it's uh, somewhere, no, no. <laughs> and somewhere, yeah, I like it. <laughs> And then some, no, I no, don't know if I should it. say because you are Italian. <laughs> I need to see it. I need to watch it. I want to see yeah. it. It has to be so funny. No, I didn't watch it. Sorry, because I didn't find yeah, it. No problem. Uh, you have so many things that it's impossible to, to, to see everything that happened. <laughs> but I will send yeah. you the link so you can have a laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Please, please, please. Yeah. Where did you eat the, the worst pizza ever? Uh, I think in Greece, maybe, probably in Greece. Okay. Greece was uh, horrendous, and uh, maybe where, sometimes even in Italy, sometimes uh, some places. Yeah. Uh, actually, in Italy, in Italy, one day, okay. in, in one of my favorite, uh, in one of my favorite uh, pizzeria, but the, the pizzaiolo was uh, sick. And they got another guy, and I asked my pizza, my copyright pizza. It was shit. It was absolute shit. And so my my guy, which is the waiter, knows me very well. He looked at me, and was like this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He took the pizza away because I couldn't eat it. It was raw, raw, completely raw. You could take the we take the dough and yeah. do this with the roll, oh, and the eggs were right. completely burned, and the burrata was big like this. I don't know where he took it because they have <laughs> a, always the nice burrata in that place. It was the most shitty pizza I have ever eaten in one of my Never favorite again. pizzerias. That's right. That's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Funny. It's Sorry. Fun. But now I have the question that the last guest left without knowing who is the next guest. So the question that he got uh, in his mind, uh, like randomly, was top or bottom? Christ. <laughs> Did he give you any any other deep or explanation or just like this? No, just like this. You don't need to explain, just... <laughs> Top. Okay. So, uh, now it's time to you to give me a question for the next uh, 
guest and it can, it can be whatever you want. Strawberry or banana? Okay. I'm writing. Nice. So this is a new thing. It's uh, actually the second time that I'm doing so. Let's let's see how it's going. But uh, I had a friend that gave me this idea that it should be cool to do like this. Uh, okay, let's try. Let's see what's what's happened. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But uh, we have at the end of this interview, so uh, I want to thank you for being my guest. It was really a pleasure, and you had a lot of interesting things. Uh, now I learned something new <laughs> because uh, this is also for me to learn new things. And um, likewise, yeah. likewise. Yeah. Do you like to say something to the people that are watching or listening this? Yeah, I would like to say I would like to say to uh, to go to the shelters and to try to help uh, the stray dogs because the stray dogs are really left alone and are really poor souls. So. Even if you go to, to, to a shelter and you take a dog out for a walk or you take a, you take a blanket or you take a, a, a box of uh, food or whatever you do, it's uh, always a, a super amazing gesture that you could do and uh, somebody will see it from above and will give you recognition from this. Or even if you, you, you can adopt a dog it will be even better and if you want to help this uh, there is a page that i run to help stray dogs so i will give you the link later so you can put it into the interview yeah. you can contact me and i can give you all the possibilities and uh, means to help stray dogs if you want to do it okay that's that's what i want to say yeah yeah and so it's an uh, important thing yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's really important. I, I will put the, the link uh, in the description uh, of this video so everybody can uh, check the link and uh, try to help because uh, helping is uh, is really important because there are so many stray dogs around the world. So if you can uh, give a help, uh, it's it's a big thing because there is a lot of people doing uh, that are doing uh, it, uh, you know, helping for free. They are uh, spending their most of their time so it's it's really important to to give them help and if someone can adopt yeah especially now the in the cold you know, so cold yeah. those poor dogs are on the, on the concrete in the fucking box alone so you can take one and just take him out for a walk or go there and just pet him or give him some some love you know it would be just fantastic yeah yeah true but I hope no. that you will get uh, help uh, with th those stray dogs uh, after after this interview. Uh, that you get um, yeah. more people. Yeah, in fact, in fact, the other things I wanted to say is that I thank you very much for your space. I really appreciate it. Uh, you are really, really cool, and uh, your your uh, format is really, really cool because uh, metal pizza is just fantastic. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you are a really, really nice person, really nice girl. So Likewise. we keep in touch. Yeah, really for hope, sure. Uh, and we can do, uh, I have other ideas about those metal pizza, how the evolution can be. So I will contact you for uh, another kind of uh, always metal pizza but a different way but it's still uh, in a in the process of thinking so it's not yet there but at some point will be so we will, we will support you as a company so we will make you, you so a lot of uh, promotion to your format now that we have the interview we will uh, promote it we will sponsor it on facebook you so, so you can reach a lot of people with your name yeah uh, and, uh, and if, if you know people that want that are part of the metal community and want to be guest in metal pizza you can give my contact and uh, yeah, yeah and yeah, uh, yeah. also people that are watching this uh, this interview if you are someone that is uh, involved in the metal music somehow or 
just contact me and uh, I will be happy to because this is uh, for everybody it's not just uh, you know big names or just musician it's uh, everybody everybody th that is involved in the metal community absolutely absolutely thank you very much again thank you